Welcome back to our course on Project 2013 Advanced. In the previous section we looked at cost reporting and towards the end of the section I changed the schedule for the NFF website development to reflect the fact that a couple of tasks have had their estimates increased. Now when we looked at the cost reports as a consequence of these changes we could see some increases in costs but in general terms and particularly when you're dealing with much larger and more complex projects than this one as the project progresses it's sometimes very difficult to work out how significant cost increases are whether they're associated with costs that are running away or whether they're associated with making better progress than you planned and there are various other associated issues that can often arise with larger and more complicated projects. Now the tools that we're going to look at in this section are the tools associated with earned value analysis and what these tools are basically about is saying given the particular point in the project how are things going really are we really ahead of schedule? Are we really over budget or under budget? And these tools together give us some very straightforward indicators and the associated reports that can really give us a good indication of how things are really going. Now before we start to look at the tools for earned value analysis in Project 2013 in detail, I need to explain to you some of the requirements for it to work properly. You can make this incredibly complicated if you're not careful and it's actually relatively straightforward once you know how to interpret a few key terms. But let's start with the basic requirements. Requirement one is that you've actually assigned your resources and costs to your project. And value analysis doesn't really work at all until you've done that and if you've only partly done it or if you keep changing it because you didn't do it right first time rather than circumstances have changed as the project has progressed then you're going to be looking at some pretty much meaningless figures as you go along so before you start expecting earned value analysis to tell you anything make sure that you've got your project in place your resources assigned and the other costs associated as well. These include things like fixed costs for tasks. The second requirement which is closely associated with that one is that you've actually saved a baseline. You are going to be using comparison with baseline figures. Now if you take this particular project, the one we're looking at now, the NFF website development project, at any point in time I may decide to save a new baseline, either an additional baseline or one to replace the original, because I may decide that my reference point needs to change to a new baseline. That's absolutely fine, but you do need a baseline, and at the moment I'm going to stick with the original baseline for the project overall. The third requirement is that earned value analysis does depend on you having done some of the work on the project. It's basically comparing what has happened with what should have happened. So it's only going to have any value at all when you've actually recorded that something has happened. Now there's one more thing to cover before we look at earned value in detail and that is percent complete. In order to explain this I'm going to just open this up and we're going to take a look at the tracking table so I'm going on to view tables let's look at tracking and you'll see that there are two columns in the tracking table percent complete and physical percent complete now at the moment physical percent complete says zero for everything whereas for tasks that have started or indeed started and finished we've actually got percent completes that are non-zero as a matter of course when project 2013 is doing its calculations on how the project is going it uses percent complete values based on how far through each task you are so if you've got a particular task say a 20 day task and 10 days have elapsed it will assume that you've done half of the work and the individual resources in it have done half their work and incurred half the cost Bear in mind that when you have costs associated with the tasks, where the accrual method may be start or finish or whatever, that will change that pattern accordingly. But basically when it's working out percent complete, it basically slices up the duration according to how far you are through the duration of the task. If in fact for one or more tasks you want to be able to record a more accurate reflection 
on how far through the task you are. So for instance, even though only half the time has gone, you may have done 70 or 80 percent of the work, or maybe 70 or 80 percent of the way through the task, you've only done 10 percent of the work. You can define a physical percent complete and manually enter that. One way of manually entering it is to enter it in this tracking table. And then when Project 2013 comes to do its calculations, its earned value calculations, it will use the physical percent complete figure rather than the percent complete figure. Now let me just take one of these tasks and just open up its task information. Let's take this one, database implementation. If you look on the advanced tab, there is an earned value method field here and this one has got it set to percent complete which means that project will always base its calculations for this task on the proportion of the way through the duration of the task and that's on the basis on which it will calculate work and cost bearing in mind the point I made just now about accrual methods now you may have all or some of your tasks set to percent complete physical percent complete to set the default, so this is the one that's applied on all new tasks, if you go into the options and down to advanced, I'm going to scroll down the advanced options, somewhere down there, two sections from the end, default task earned value method percent complete, you can have that set either way. I should point out while we're here by the way, baseline for earned value calculation. Now I did mention a little while ago that you may change your baseline and if you do change your baseline and you want your earned value method to use the newer or even the older baseline then this is how you change which of the baselines the earned value calculations are made against. Now the next thing I want to look at in relation to earned value is the Microsoft Project Help. Now, one of the reasons I'm pointing this out to you specifically is that the terminology of earned value is often the thing that really baffles people. There's no need for it because at the end of the day there are just a few numbers you need to look at which basically tell you what you need to know. But partly because of the history of earned value calculations and partly so that you can really understand what the numbers mean if you really need that level of understanding, it's worth knowing what these terms mean. Now we're going to start with three terms that are fully explained in the Microsoft Project Help. I'm not going to go through them all now. PV, AC and EV. These correspond to the old terms, the ones that were used in the earlier days of earned value analysis and which you'll very often see still. BCWS, ACWP and BCWP. Now, in many ways, looking at the old terms does help to explain these terms more fully, but I'm generally going to refer to the new terms beyond this point, because the new terms trip a little bit more easily off the tongue, and in many ways they also encapsulate what they mean. Let's start with planned value. Now, in explaining these terms, I'm going to use the example that they use in the online help. And in the online help, they basically use an example of a four-day task, which has a total value of $100. And when we say a value of $100, that means the cost of performing that task, whether it's in terms of materials or work resources or any other costs, is $100, $25 per day. Now, if you look at that task at the end of day three of four, the planned value is $75. And if I look at the longer acronym, BCWS, that's the budgeted cost of the work scheduled, which means that according to our plan, according to our budget, at this point in time, after day three, we should have incurred $75 of cost. Now the planned value on its own is an important thing to know, but it doesn't tell you how your project is doing, as the comment there says. So planned value basically says, where should we be at this point in time? It doesn't tell you anything about where you are, it only tells you where you should be.
Now one of the reasons for using the example in the online help here is that I believe there are a couple of errors and I really want to refer to one of those here. I also think there are one or two errors when you actually come to produce the earned value reports. Just some words that are wrong which can actually be very misleading. In the case of actual cost, what the actual cost represents is the actual cost of the work that we've done so far. Now in the example here they talk about the four-day task again and they say for example if the four-day task actually incurs a total cost of $35 during each of the first two days the AC the actual cost for the period is $70 but the PV is still $75 that's wrong I think the PV should be $50 because in two days out of four you will have incurred $50 worth of cost now read the second paragraph however with this value you don't know how well your project is doing for example if you plan to get a lot more work done for that same seventy dollars that doesn't sound good so I've got to the end of day two I've spent seventy dollars instead of fifty maybe I'm just ahead of schedule maybe I'm doing really well and I'm gonna finish this task early because I've done the work early I've got well ahead on this task or alternatively I may still have another two days work to do I may still need to spend another seventy dollars to do the second half of the task in which case overall on this task I will have overspent considerably I will have spent hundred and forty dollars instead of a hundred dollars so the actual cost also doesn't tell you everything you need to know it's one more piece of the jigsaw it's one more useful piece of information basically says at this point in time in relation to this task what is the actual cost of the work performed it doesn't tell me what the value of the work is it only tells me what it costs to produce it and the final piece the important piece is the third value that we're going to look at next which is the earned value and in fact earned value is itself a relatively straightforward thing to understand particularly if you look at the longer acronym BCWP the budgeted cost of the work performed so let's suppose that I get to the end of day two of this four day task and I look at how much of the task I've done I should have done 50 percent but let's suppose that I look at the task and I say I've actually done 60 percent of the work then the earned value is basically sixty dollars I've done sixty percent of the work so the value of what I've done is sixty dollars that may be completely different from the cost of doing that work I may well not have spent sixty dollars doing it but the value of what I've done is sixty dollars if in fact as the example on the help there says you've spent eighty dollars getting there then you're really not doing very well whereas if you've only spent forty dollars or fifty dollars getting there you're actually doing pretty well so the earned value says let me look at the work I've done what is the value of that what was my budgeted cost how much did I think getting that amount of work done would cost 60% of a $100 task gives it an earned value of $60 now in previous times uh, even before we have the more sophisticated versions of Microsoft Project that we had now even if you understood earned value analysis and you were using a tool like project to help you to do it you would still have quite a bit of calculation and so on to do the good news with project 2013 is that these values and the values that are derived from them and the analysis and reporting that we can do is all pretty much highly automated within Microsoft Project and in the next section we're going to look at how Project can basically juggle all these numbers for us give us all these values and let us get a good insight into how well or badly a project is going and in the next section we're going to go into these and these other values in quite some detail but the important thing to understand really is these three things because if you understand the difference between the cost of doing some work 
and the value of doing that work so I may have done this amount of work but what was it actually worth to me that's the important thing to understand in order to understand what's happening with earned value analysis if you're new to earned value analysis or you're new to project management or both then this really is well worth getting to grips with because it's going to give you an invaluable way of looking at your projects so having laid the ground rules down and the things you have to do before you start doing earned value analysis we've looked at things like the earned value method we've now looked at these key terms in the next section we're going to apply a bit of earned value analysis to our projects so please join me for that